Hello everyone and welcome back to your YouTube channel and welcome to this very important and amazing video today. The video today is extremely short because what I am trying to do is basically answer a very popular and very useful question, practical question of people using quasi-dynamic simulations inside the Xilin Power Factory. First, let me tell you something. Quasi-dynamic simulation is one of the very underestimated and misunderstood tool when you are using, uh, when you are interested on planning for mid-term and long-term planning, okay? And the reason is that many people confuse the quasi-dynamic simulation with uh, the classical ruining of several lot flows. Quasi-dynamic is beyond that. Quasi-dynamic is the tool that allows you to include small, small variations in the state variable. So with this tool, you are able to calculate many things that you cannot do with the classical load flow. For instance, a state of charge of the battery energy storage. For instance, you can calculate probability of high voltages or under voltages or the probability of losses or overloading a cable. This is the amazing thing related with quasi-dynamics. However, today, uh, what I will try to do is basically, basically answer a question regarding time characteristic. Many people are confused how do you use, how you can use the time characteristic inside Power Factory. Time, char time characteristics can be used in several ways. One of them is using tables, that is basically an object inside the quasi-dynamic, but also you can use external files. And regarding exter external files, of course, if you are working with real power system, if you are working with real power system, of course, that is uh, an advantage. When you, when you are using this kind of power system, of course, you will be able to use timestamp data. And with this time step data, you will be able to run your quasi-dynamic simulations. But before I start with the practical things, I highly suggest that you be aware about what we are doing in the educational area and some of the theory and some of the development that I am doing regarding quasi-dynamics. Well, without further delay, let me go to uh, Dixie and Power Factory. Okay, here we are. Right now we are inside Dixie and Power Factory. I have this extremely simple extremely simple but useful uh, power system. It's a distribution system, it's a very simple system, it's basically a external grid as you can see over here, there is external grid and this external grid over here is providing some power through this step down transformer, then we have a small distribution line and we have this bus bar number three. On bus bar number three we have four different loads to be honest, the idea of the four different loads is to show you how to use the files and how to define the time characteristic using, um, using objects inside the Xilin Power Factory. However, before I start, I would like to tell you something very important about the PV system. Quasi-dynamics, quasi-dynamic analysis allow you to create or use, to create more detailed model regarding PV system. As you can see over here, we are using the model to represent the power production using the solar calculation. When you are using the solar calculation, the system is considering the latitude and longitude and basically a model for the solar irradiation. That's allow you, together with the description of the PV panel, to create more accurate and more um, a specific model for your um, power plants, PV power plants. So I highly suggest that you take advantage of this tool in order that you can use the quasi-dynamic simulation and create more details and more a specific model for your PV system, okay? What I will do now is I will run a quasi-dynamic simulation. You can see here the date. I am running the 31st of uh, March of 2019 a full day with a 30 minutes resolution, okay? 
This is just to show you the PV power plant production. You can see here in yellow, this is the power, the active power produced by the, by the PV power plant. As you can see over here, during the solar hours, during the sunlight hours, you can see how the power is exported into the, into the external grid. And that is basically an advantage because you can sell that over production. However, you can see how we have some increased uh, uh, voltage during the solar PV production, but you can see here some histogram because that is one of the advantages of the quasi-dynamic system because that they, uh, that they allow you to create this kind of uh, probabilistic distribution functions, okay? What I will do now is I will start to show you some ways to represent loads inside the quasi-dynamic simulation. The first step that I will do is I will put out the service, this load, I mean, I will put on service, and this is a load that is 1,200 kilowatts. This is a constant load. So during the 24 hour, you can see over here, this is the profile, the load profile. You can see that from 00 to 230, you can see 1,200 kilowatt as the power production. On the top, you can see in red color what is the active power losses of this system. So this is the very basic representation. If you are using a classical load flow, you are here, okay? What I will do now is I will put out the service, this load. And now what I will do is I will enable the most simple model that you can have for the representation of a low profile during 24 hour. And in this case, if I go here and edit the characteristic, you can see that I am using a 24 hour table, okay? This is probably the simple way to define the time characteristic for one load. You can see here, we have the time, 30 minute resolution, and on the right hand side, the right column, you can see here the values. We are using, in this case, percentage, relative percentage for the load, okay? As you can see, there is here a representation. I will not go for the details, just room the quasi-dynamic simulation. Let me see that the load is on service. Now the load is on service. And what I will do is room the quasi-dynamic simulation. And now you can see, you can see how the load in red color is representing the table and the load demand during the 24 hours at that very specific load, and you can see how it's changing. Of course, we will have some impact because we can see that right now the power is changing during the 24 hours, okay, for this very specific load. Now what I will do is I will put out the service, uh, sorry, it's not this one. What I will do is I will put the, um, of the service, this load, that is the table. And now I will go for the more interesting. The most interesting is when you start to have a file, because now you can define the time characteristic using, for instance, txt file, txt files. In this case, I am using basically in this case, I am using basically a uh, a uh, text file, but this text file, of course, is, of course, this text file has a very specific um, structure that is defined by the user. And what I will do is I will open straight away, I will open straight away the format. As you can see, the first column is basically the first column is basically the timestamp. You can see here date, month, and year, and then hour, a minute. Then we have this separator over here, and we have the second column for the variables, okay? It's very important, it's very important that the user must be able to understand that they must have the same time format when you are using the file and considering the time stamp, okay? It's very important that you consider the time format for the stamp, that you have a proper definition of that time stamp data 
and also that you use the proper column separator, okay? Well, after that, what I will do is stray away. I will see, yes, now this load is in service. And now I will run the simulation, the 24 hour simulation. And now in green color, you can see over here that we are using the test file and we get the load demand, the load demand, the 24 hour profile for this load. Okay. Now what I will do is I will go back to the loads. I will put this based on the test file out of the service and I will enable the last one. The last one is also quite interesting because the time characteristic is defined by a comma separated value, okay? In this case, we need to be careful again for the timestamp. Please be careful about the time format. Be careful about the file name and the location. Be sure that you are using common separated values and also be careful with the separators. Be careful if your file is using comma as decimal point or not. You need to match between the file and your computer and the power factory definition for the column separator and for the decimal separator. If you don't, if you don't get that match, you will get a, you will get a disconnection and you will not get the low profile. Now let me run the simulation. Now, as you can see over here in purple color, we have the low profile, but in this case, we are using the time characteristic coming from the, uh, the, the comma separated values file that I already presented to you. Let me show you again. This is the comma separated value. You can see that I am opening using Microsoft. I am using Microsoft uh, Excel. And you can see the timestamp is following date, month, year, space, hour, minute, seconds. Okay. Be careful with the data stamp, the timestamp. Be careful with that. Otherwise, you will get errors and then the simulation will run a flat straight line based on the numerical value that is on the power dispatch. Okay. Well, we are almost finishing this, this very specific video today. Again, I would like to invite you to stay in touch and be aware that we are creating this educational area and specifically the idea behind this video today is to educate people that we have this very powerful tool that is quasi dynamic simulation. It's a very important tool. It's more than a systematic running load flow. It's basically a tool that allows you to calculate many things, especially with the integration of low carbon technology. Well, this is all for this video today. I will say thank you very much to everyone and I will see you at the next one. Bye now.